Today on the Pro-Life Podcast, the border crisis, drug mules, and the Heartbeat Act. What do these things have in common? And cardiac cells, are they hearts? Are they not? Do they beat? Let's talk about it. Basically, the New York Times, so what we're talking about is that the New York Times has uh, published an article saying that uh, the Texas Heartbeat Act is misleading, that it's not really a heart, that these are just uh, a tube of cardiac cells uh, with electrical flickers that just happen to pump blood to the rest of the body. And it's like, hmm, you mean like cells that uh, have electrical flickers and pump blood to the rest of the body? You mean like... A heart. A heart? Like a heart. Wow, that sounds quite like a heart. But also, the fact that they'll call it cardiac cells, it's like, what does the word cardiac mean? Like, can you look up the word cardiac? I mean, I could. Google. Let's see. We need... Okay, well, while you're doing this, (laughs) one of the things that they're even doing in these articles, um, I mean, they're blaming OB-GYNs. They're saying that, uh, that your OBs, your obstetricians, are contributing to this misclassification of what this activity is. Because, Veronica, oh, you've had three kids. Gosh. What do you do when you're at your ultrasound six, eight weeks? You look for the heartbeat. And what do they call it? A heartbeat. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wait, wait. You can even hear it. <laughs> wait. Goes, thump, 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 so, thump. <laughs> yeah. So the ob are being blamed, but I thought we were supposed to trust the experts. Are we oh, not now? Terrible. It depends what side okay. of the aisle these experts are on, and that, that's how we're supposed to trust them. It says, Thank um, you. doctors are partly to blame for the confusion. Many physicians whose patients are excited about a desired pregnancy will use the word heartbeat to describe the cardiac activity heard on an old, early ultrasound. The word has even crept into the medical literature. Oh, my gosh. Uh, crept. Let's see. So, again, that okay. Again, that shows we're like, trying to classify use the word heartbeat for people who are excited about a desired pregnancy. Okay, here again, we're taking a the woman's subjective plans for the unborn child, and that's what we're using to say you know this term is right or this term like the subject words don't have meaning anymore. They don't just mean it. They only mean yeah. what you want them to mean at that well, time. I mean, they it's did completely this ridiculous. Ages ago with the word fetus, which is Latin for little one or offspring, and now suddenly we're not allowed to use the word heart because it doesn't have meaning scientifically. That's absurd. You mean like it's humanizing as if like um, almost as if the unborn child were a human with a heart like us. Wow, what a novel concept. Look, whether you know the what they're trying, they're mad about it and going, trying to go to these links to say, okay, actually, people, it's not really a heartbeat anymore uh, because of, of what it evokes, like the truth that it tells. I mean, when I was pregnant for the first time uh, with Andrew, they, I, I'd been in the pro life movement, you know, seven, eight, nine years, right? I knew that at eight weeks, a heartbeat was there and was detectable. That's what, okay, but when they did the ultrasound and I heard, I mean, these are things that I already knew. Right. But it was such, even just such a game changer hearing yeah, his heartbeat hear and then seeing on the ultrasound, right. I was like, oh my gosh, like there's a head and his legs and his arms and a body, clearly someone else's body inside so my body. That made my cardiac cells flicker with electricity, <laughs> Emily. You're such a cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. That's but awesome. it's so ridiculous because oh. like reading from the New York Times article here, at this very early stage of pregnancy, the embryo is the size of a pomegranate seed and only has primitive a primitive tube of cardiac cells that emit electrical pulses and pump blood. Like... What That's does literally your, what the heart <laughs> does? Is your heart doing heart. something else? Like, is my heart? Yeah. Am I the question. only one? Yeah. Veronica, do you have cardiac activity right now? I <laughs> can't. I hope so. Probably <laughs> too much because <laughs> can't can you it it up? <laughs> yeah, you oh, might need to slow down Sorry. on those well, electrical pulses. If you, a bit. Will you take it a step back further from the heartbeat? It, talking about the conception being the very beginning of life, uh, we go super into the weeds. I'll just keep it short. I was reading this awesome book by Stephanie Gray, amazing pro life activist, mm-hmm. and it's about IVF and infertility. Mm-hmm. And she just has this one little sideline in there. She talks about the irony that. IVF has contributed to the pro-life world in a small way and that it has affirmed in the lay crowd, the average population, that life begins at conception because otherwise how could you possibly have an in vitro baby? Like they're literally 
combining sperm and egg in glass in vitro in a lab and if the if that successfully combines and creates a new human being then they call it a life and then they can implant it into a mother's womb so ivf has loads of ethical dilemmas topic for another day but i was like that is so interesting because okay. people are like oh it's not alive it's not alive i'm like well then why are you paying ten thousand dollars to have a human being created in a lab that is alive you're right like that, about that yeah i was i was really uh Amazed by her insight. Yeah. And she's amazing, by the way. Look her up. Yeah. And it's so interesting. Like, whenever you were talking about whenever you were pregnant with Andrew, how um, that just ordinary experience affirmed the pro-life pro philosophy to you. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Democrats are really losing on issues like these that are so contrary to the truth that we experience every day. That normal people, mm -hmm. um, like, have babies and have sonograms <laughs> and right. um, see those experiences and know that this is a heartbeat. But whenever yeah. the left comes in with their experts who are, I guess, are better than the experts of... And let's say OB-GYNs are right. misleading. They are. Uh, yeah. You get yeah. so extreme. It's like almost as if that's like how it was designed. Animal farm all over again. Yeah. So anyways, like, it's the truth that we see and the truth that we experience every day and that normal people know um, and then the left trying to come and be like preachy and say like, oh no, like what you think you know is actually not what you know, that this is completely different and we know better. So you think, you thought you were hearing Andrew's heartbeat, but really it was those mm. electrical pulses again. Is, is that what they call gaslighting? That might be it. Uh, that's a good but word. But they wouldn't tell you, so. Yeah. Right. Well, no. it's funny. That's I like, a say. minute ago you said Democrats and then you said the left. I'm growing more and more uh, interested in using the word the left. And left okay. us. So, um, because Democrats, I think, are actually, many of them, the average person is also getting really fed up with the left. And I saw this article from the New York Times the other day that said that these Democrats were actually taking their pro Biden slogans and signs oh. out of their yards because they were afraid that their neighbors were going to think that they were leftists, when in reality, they were just like, quote unquote, normal Democrats. And I was like, oh, praise God, there is hope for the United States. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's <laughs> what I would think because if my neighbors have in the yard still. It's like maybe these people could be even convinced to be to vote pro-life. Like they right. can be Democrat all they want as long as they realize that abortion is evil. I'm fine with that. So, yeah, yeah the end. So well, box over. <laughs> I guess that transitions into our next topic. Uh, if we're ready to move on here. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, according to Politico, uh, some of their polling data had leaked, and it says that the Democrats are in for a beatdown, a brutal beatdown going into November because, quote, wait, let me say this, uh, voters think the party is preachy, judgmental, and focused on culture wars, and uh, the GOP has alarmingly potent culture war attacks that we're able to mm. focus on these social issues that a few years ago, I remember the, um, like, top politicos both on the right and the left would say like don't talk about social issues uh it yeah. doesn't matter but everyone these, was trying to be moderate and absolutely. now no one is trying to be moderate yeah, yeah. and so it shows that uh the pro-life issues are being um you know at front and center and that that's a winning issue for us and uh, that the democrats are actually going to be if they don't answer these gop attacks that they are going to be in for a brutal beat down coming into November, just because like what we that. talked about, <laughs> yeah. Um, like we can see the truth with our own eyes whenever they're trying to overcorrect here mm -hmm. and over preach of, uh, no, 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 your unborn child's heartbeat is not really a heartbeat. Those are just uh, cardiac cells, which, you know, we were Googling what a it's heart- It's just so crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. So yeah. Crazy. I mean, when you're talking about um, like Texas, Texas specific, even in, uh, with, with the, in, in the independent sector, so, a couple weekends ago, Chairman Matt Rinaldi, who's the state uh, GOP chairman here in Texas, he told us at the SREC, the State Republican Executive Committee, that polls were showing that Biden was polling at 20 percent favorable rating among Texas independents. And like that's the lowest Yikes. Yikes, ever, indeed. ever been. That so. is a deep down. <laughs> yike. Wow. Mm -hmm. Singular yike. Yeah. So like it also it continues in this just, article. Just one. <laughs> just one. Once we get closer to November, you'll have multiple, multiple yikes. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we'll save those for the left that the leftists can have those yikes. Um, if Democrats don't answer Republican hits, Politico continues. The party operatives warned that the GOP's lead on generic ballots on the generic ballot balloons from to 14 points. Uh, 
Wow. Yeah, that wow. contrast that with about like 2010 with the Tea Party wave, there the lead leading the lead that Republicans had going into uh, the Tea Party wave back in 2010 ish was much smaller than what they're predicting here. So if that's true, we could be looking at historic gains. Um, going in and it's because it. yeah it's, and it's because yeah. of what we talked about yeah i mean especially on the border those uh, the oh, yeah. rgv yes. the rio grande valley yeah. uh, area mm -hmm. and we saw that we saw that trend you know i'm just talking about tax rights life in general in 2014 when we did the winnie davis greg abbott governor's mm -hmm. race when we did targeted ads in 2014 in spanish mm -hmm. to those to some of the border yes. counties you got and, voter record turnout in Hispanic yeah. communities and, I mean, down there it was and amazing the, the numbers that i mean she was she wendy davis was, was supposed to perform really well and in the counties that we targeted she did it and yeah. so you know the state gop and just you know different organizations too are targeting that and we're we're seeing mainstream articles and stuff all about how this kind of uh red wave is coming yeah. south texas it's time i've i've actually gotten to go to a few border towns in the last couple of years and it's it's it was a really eye-opening experience uh for multiple reasons i i we in our student programs i asked the students to take me to the actual border and to tell me about it and what are their thoughts and every single one of them uh was very pro uh stopping all the trafficking i mean mm. who wouldn't be once they know about it mm -hmm. um it was really beautiful to see and also sad. We could literally hear bombs going off oh across gosh. the border. I was like, whoa. And then the other day I was at an event in the McAllen area and um, I would say like 70% of the crowd there, this about 200 people event, were Hispanic and they were signing up for our for life newsletters and they were like, yeah, we we want to address all of these issues. It was, it was really, really beautiful. Yeah. Texas Right to Life is facing 14 lawsuits from Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. They're suing us because we helped pass the Texas Heartbeat Act, and they're trying to scare us pro-lifers into backing down. Please join us in the fight against Planned Parenthood and donate to protect the Texas Heartbeat Act. You can fight for the unborn and build a pro-life Texas that values every human life. Go to texasrighttolife.com slash lawsuit to make your contribution. Every cent will help and it's greatly appreciated. Have a child in high school? Register them for Team Life Camp coming up on April 1st weekend in Carville, Texas. They're gonna have a blast with canoeing, archery, hiking, and much more. And all the while learning how to better defend the unborn from the crazy agenda of the left. But hurry, the ticket price increases on March 19th, so grab your tickets now. Every life is sacred, and every life is worthy of protection. Register now at TeamLifeCamp.com. I'm Kim Schwartz. I'm the Texas Right to Life Director of Media and Communication. I'm Veronica Smither. I work with the youths. I am the Education Director. I'm Emily Cook. I serve as Texas Right to Life's General Counsel and run our patient advocacy program. And Brent Klingerman, IT Director and token white guy of the panel. <laughs> so... Another thing I'd like to talk about is this Vice News documentary that I saw. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that comes out of Vice News is always very exciting. Uh, this one in particular was basically condoning a Mexican black market of abortion drugs. It was it was really shocking, actually. I thought it would be more neutral and show or, or portray what's happening and and let us come to our own opinion. Wouldn't that be nice if all news agencies did that? We know that doesn't happen, but I was shocked at just how blatant they were saying basically like, this is the new way and this is how it's gonna be until Texas decides to stop restricting abortion. So and are you talking about an abortion coming through, abortion pills coming through Mexico to Texas? Is that what you mean? Yes, and also uh, drug tourism. They are inviting, okay. incentivizing people mm -hmm. to come to the border or to just cross all the way into Mexico. And uh, so they were, they they toured in this documentary, they toured a bunch of Mexican pharmacies and they were showing all these drugs and the, the anchor went through and um, like purchased a lot of these drugs herself to see what it was really like. And um, and it showed the discrepancy in the the information that the pharmacists are giving out to people. Probably a lot of them are not even real pharmacists. They're also selling these drugs. 
uh, off market. And so they're, they're, they're not giving people real good instructions on how to take them in a safe way. Of course, we all know that an abortion always kills a baby. So it's never safe for the baby, but, but it's not safe for the woman. They're getting totally conflicting information. And of course they thought that was a bad thing. They did highlight that as a bad thing, but they, but they said basically like, this is the need. This is why abortion has to be legal so that we can get good information. And that is such a, that is such a wrong perspective because we know that abortion is always going to kill a human being. So just making it legal to make it safer for the woman is a terrible idea. And also, can I just talk about this poor woman in the video who mm -hmm. had an abortion? Like the, the, the main oh gosh, story yeah. at the beginning of this video, Mia Santiago, I believe, had been with her partner for a month, she said. So she was not planning or expecting to get pregnant. And she was really upset about it. Felt like she didn't have any resources. And she said, some things you just got to do in life. And um, she said, there's no getting around this guilt or shame, but you but you shouldn't have to feel guilty or ashamed. And so she contacted this uh, nonprofit in Mexico that's helping people get illegal abortion drugs. And she got like handoff. Basically, these drugs are trafficked across the border from Mexico. And uh, God knows if they're even really what they what the label says it says, like these black market drugs and um and she's getting conflicting information on how to take it and then she said um she wanted to do this in her own home because it feels safer it's more comforting but we know that that's not true i mean these are these drugs are literally causing her to bleed out on purpose and that's dangerous in and of itself but doing that at home alone without any help like she could literally have bled out and died and this has happened to women before um, this is not exaggerating. There are whole hard. websites that log this, these cases happening. And, um, and you can hear the pain in her voice when she's talking about what uh, she went through and how she felt like she had to do it. Like she's literally on the verge of tears and her mm -hmm. throat's tightening up. You can hear it and see it because it's a really great documentary, honestly, about her pain. And was, no one actually offered to help her for real. They just said, right. oh, good for you to, well, you did what you had to do. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Yeah. No. Yeah, that she's not, not feeling pain because of the lack of abortion. It's because we don't want abortion to begin with. Like, right. you don't, you don't, that, that's not, that. that's why you feel guilty or shameful. It's, it's not because I can't access abortion. It's because yeah. I know that it's bad. I know that it's wrong. And um, I, I just, that. That's just hard. It's way. interesting you said that, you know, basically we this guilt and shame is here for a reason. And I, I want her to seek healing. I want her to, to no longer ever have to be ashamed. And that mm -hmm. I, I can't help but make a plug as a Jesus freak. I mean, there is hope and healing for you, Mia, or anyone. You know, right. that this doesn't have to be the case. But it is interesting to note that when people say there's no way getting around this guilt or shame, that's there for a reason. That's our conscience. That's the Holy Spirit saying don't do this. Like we, it is okay to listen to that voice saying, this is bad. Don't do this. You'll be ashamed. And, but now she's trying to convince herself. She's trying to lie to herself that what she did was the right thing. When she literally said, there's no way around this guilt or shame. And, and look at the flip side. Like what, on the flip side, what resources are there to help? To help women in unplanned pregnancies. We know all about those. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. first, I mean, you just know? pregnancy centers have been doing this for decades and they're so good at it. But also, I mean, Texas Right to Life is literally working right now on our future legislative agenda with more supportive services for women. And I mean, how many millions of dollars are in the alternative abortion program right now? And um, oh, yeah. a lot of people don't know about that, which is a real problem. People need right. to know so that they don't think that they're alone. But the reality is there are resources. And I just keep thinking, like, if someone had just said, like, Mew, I'll help you, you know, you don't have to do this. Well, it's this catch-22 thing with uh, both the abortion industry and I would say the leftist media, like Vice, that will push these things. They did this whole documentary on um, illegal abortion drugs. And I can't help but think that part of the motivation for that is... So that way they'll reach women uh, who might be in the similar situation and say, oh, I can do that just like Mia. Yeah. Why not do a documentary on the pregnancy centers that actually help these women? And, um, you yeah. know, you see that all the time. But also I want to point out the catch 22 uh, situation of the abortion industry with their rhetoric. So they're talking about mm. uh, in the same uh, piece, how it's good for women to access these abortion pills, but also it's dangerous for women to access these abortion pills. They have to pick a lane. Mm -hmm. And you've got this divide in the uh, pro-abortion movement right now of 
the more uh, new age wing, if you will, saying like, yes, um, you know, you have abortion bans like in Texas with the Texas Heartbeat Act. And, uh, you know, that's not a big deal. The new age uh, people saying like, oh, well, we can just send these abortion pills overseas and women can still get abortions and it's fine. Like, don't worry, women guys. on waves or that yeah. word. Yeah. And then you've got the establishment abortion industry like Planned Parenthood and Whole Woman's Health saying, um, no, 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 at-home abortions, do-it-yourself abortions are dangerous for women and we shouldn't do these. So they're in this um, just lose-lose situation of whether they're going to push these abortion pills or not. And you've seen that divide. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. <laughs> what do you got? What I'm you excited. Got? Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm just like, yes, yes, because... In the same documentary that I was talking about, Vice News, there you you meet these two women who are uh, their whole mission, their whole nonprofit is about getting these illegal drugs to women, and they say um, in Spanish, no matter the way uh, to get an abortion is a legitimate way. We're going to help you do it, and if you start bleeding out, and they say if the ish hits the fan and you have to go to the hospital, just tell them you're having a miscarriage. Don't tell them what happened, and That's that so reckless. is awful. Yeah. I mean, think about her own risks of. A lot of people say, what about, you know, risks of not being able to carry future children? In that moment, that might not be a very good talking point because you'd be like, that is irrelevant to me. I do not want children. But what about her, the rest of her health? What about her mental health? I mean, our 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 bodies yeah. are, it's not just like one separate organ that you can mess with. Like everything is connected. Like our hormones connect to our mental health. And uh, that is a huge issue. And we also know that abortion uh, skyrockets your risk for depression, suicide, alcoholism, uh, drug abuse, everything. So they're literally telling women to lie to their healthcare providers. It's like absurd. And they said, sorry, sorry. No, you it's in the name of health. Don't 60 worry. 60 to 90 percent success rate and just glossed over. OK, well, what about the 10 to 40 percent that don't work? Mm-hmm. I, I know those that watch it. I just watched it. It's like 75 to 90. Oh, so what? The, 75 so, to 90. So the Internet trolls okay. are going to be all like, you missed it by 5%. Um, but yeah, that's, okay, that's accurate. Like, okay, so potentially a quarter of the time this does not work. And what happens? Okay. Yeah. Are they marketing this to minors? They There's don't acknowledge this. it. They don't acknowledge the age. So so it could be literally anyone on TikTok. And we all know that's a dumpster fire of 14-year-olds that are lonely and depressed. And so taking pills in their yep. bathroom and, t- and their and parents bleeding out. Know, their parents well, don't have any idea. Well, and even the guy Ridiculous. in the this pharmacy in Mexico. I watched the documentary a couple hours ago. And he's like, oh, yeah, it comes in a pack of 28, but you take 10. So you, like, take one of them. And then you take this. And they're like... They go to a different pharmacy and they're like, okay, well, you only take six of these, but it's like, yeah. So there's no guidance. Which, there, on how yeah, to take there's it. no guidance. Which is that. not to uh, give this false impression that I think having guidance would just make it all okay, I, because it would never make it all okay. But it is, it's even, it's just an added layer to the terribleness that there's no guidance on how to take it. Right. And we're not going to talk about the potentially like emotionally damaged, like, 16 year old who's in their bathroom upstairs right just and their parents have pills no with idea. no instruction here mm-hmm. and their parents yeah. are going to find god only knows what the next month. it just right. shows um, that um like what we're seeing in texas right now with these uh illegal abortion pills coming across the border and trying to get um illegal abortion pills to people to do these diy abortions that I think that's going to show what the rest of the nation is going to look like after Roe v. Wade is overturned. We're already seeing it. So we can have this glimpse going into June when hopefully Roe v. Wade is overturned with the Mississippi case that um, I think that we're going to see this glimpse of Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. I think the entire abortion movement is still kind of in that catch-22. They haven't decided how they're going to address that, whether they're going to promote these illegal abortions or if they're going to um, kind of sever that wing of the abortion movement and that there will always be that split. But it's so interesting that we're seeing this right now and it's um, good that we can actually get a glimpse of it so we can get a handle on it before that um, before that actually happens. Right, before it goes nationwide. Yeah. So right now it's mostly a, a byproduct, I think, of the Texas Heartbeat Act. Um, which is like playing whack-a-mole with the abortion industry there, um, you know. So even if even if abortion, even if these drugs are outlawed, I mean, people could be doing illegal abortions of non-chemical nature. Um, so actually, just the other day, I was I was brainstorming with some of the students that we work with on college campuses about how do we reach these women who are going to to uh, be a consumer of the black market of mm-hmm. 
the mm. abortion drugs? Like, how do we reach them? Because they're probably going on TikTok and seeing ads or hearing hearsay a friend. Oh, this is the person I call. Here's my contact. Basically, here's my drug dealer. Here's my contact across the border. I'll give you their phone number. And so how do we reach these people? It made me think of like those whisper apps and those little anonymous apps. I'm such an old lady. I don't know how this works anymore. But basically, <laughs> like, there, you know what I mean? There's these little apps where you can like, post an honest and be like, I have an abortion schedule tomorrow. Or I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to get this. And then people are like, oh, that's so hard. And then, but there's no oversight. There's no real contact. Nobody knows who anybody is unless you just like chase down IP addresses. And um, occasionally investigators will use these to bust rings. But I'm like, is this the new world? Like we're going to be busting abortion trafficking rings? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. I'm afraid that's where we're headed. We're going to have kind of a cyber terrorism, anti-counter cyber terrorism group that's tracking this stuff down. Once, you know, once abortion is either, you know, a, a return to the states, illegal in very, you know, at various stages, whatnot, it doesn't, we still have the component of we needing to teach people what the reality of abortion is and instilling that in our youth, talking to our congregations about it um, and, and not just saying, OK, well, abortion's illegal now on, you know, illegal on the books and we can go and do something else. No, the fight's the fight's not over and yeah, that component changing. still has to, we still have to continue and everyone be very intentional um, from your Sunday school class to your kid's best friend about what is the value of life and um, to change both hearts and minds at the same time. Amen. Yep. It's just a, right. Is this a good time to ask you to tell your Sunday school story? She told me a Sunday school story earlier and it was so funny. This is maybe a good time to wrap it up. But okay. <laughs> Let's, we can tell a Sunday so, school story. So, Let's so tell funny. a Sunday school story before we go. You gotta tell, you gotta tell. So the de- today. Do tell, do tell. <laughs> The, today is President's Day that we're recording this. So yesterday was the day before and ah, Sunday at church. And um, our our little children's minister was had all the kids up there for their little children's sermon. And she was trying to explain um, to this, you know, we're, we're in Southeast Texas where my church is and uh, very rural and uh, asking them to ha- how to pray for our president. No matter what you think of the president, that <laughs> we need to pray for our president. And Indeed. so she asked these little children. Um, who's our current president? Who's our president? And the chorus of kids say, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> we just, it, it, the, the congregation was born. And um, so you could really tell where, where all the young parents fell in, you know, at, at our church. Changing and so uh, <laughs> we were just dying laughing. So, so there you go. Not my president. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Well, on that note, happy President's Day, guys. Yes. <laughs> happy President's Day. Thanks for listening to episode one. See you next week. We'll talk about something equally crazy. <laughs>